guys, thanks for checking back in. Sorry it's taken us so long to post another video, but life has been a little bit crazy with appointments and stuff. Super crazy, super busy. My practice is growing tremendously, but it's a good thing. Yep, yep, and he just had a big birthday, so we were away for that. Big three zero. Yep, we're old, it's official. <laughs> yeah, you're a cradle robber though, because you're still six months older than me. I think it's eight months, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, you're a cradle robber. Whatever, we were, 17 and 18 when we started dating. I don't think that counts as cradle robbing. It counts as something else. <laughs> You're silly. It starts with statutory. It's not statutory. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, today we wanted to talk to you guys about uh, the retrieval and transfer process. Last time I talked to you guys about all the medications I've been on and the side effects from all the hormones. Um, so what those medications do is they make my follicles grow or my eggs grow. So I would go in and get ultrasounds, as I mentioned, like three times a week and blood draws to see how well my ovaries were responding. Um, once the doctor said I had enough eggs, which for me was like five for the first time, um, which for most people could be like 23 or 30, but for me, five was a good number. Um, so I did something called a trigger shot. So what that means is John uh, gave me a shot in my ass of HCG, which is what you test for in someone's urine to find out if they're pregnant. So technically after that shot, if I had peed on a pregnancy test, I would have got my first positive pregnancy test ever. Uh, so he gave me a shot in my butt and then we wait, what was it, 48 hours or? 48. Yeah, 48 hours we waited and then we go in for the retrieval process. So what happens in retrieval is they put me to sleep and they um, go up my business with like a, a probe type thing with like a little tube on the end and then they use a needle and go through the side of my vagina into my eggs and like retrieve them. So I'm asleep for, for that whole thing and then you wake up and they tell you how many eggs you got and how that goes. But uh, what was that like for you? Like, I mean. Well, while you're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing, queuing up Pornhub and <laughs> giving a fresh sample. <laughs> so uh, my morning was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just another example of how different the whole process is for women and men. Um, but when I woke up, they told us that they were able to get all five eggs that they had seen on ultrasound. And then they uh, actually fertilize them in the lab that evening. The eggs may be fertilized with sperm injected directly into them during a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. The fertilized eggs, also called embryos, will be monitored for three to five days as they begin to grow. At this time, the lab may create a hole in the zona pellucida surrounding some of the embryos. This process, called assisted hatching, will help these embryos implant in the uterus. Some of the embryos will be used right away for embryo transfer, and the rest will be frozen and stored for future use if necessary. And then they give you a call the next day and tell you how many made it through fertilization. So then the next day they called and said, three, was it three? I think it was, Four, yeah, four fertilized, and we let them uh, mature for five days until blastocyst. And so when the day came for transfer, we had the doctor recommend that we transfer twins. And so we transferred two of them and then left the other two as frozen. But I unfortunately wasn't even there for that process. Yeah. Your mom took you because mm -hmm. I had to work, and that's just the day it fell on. So. Um, it's kind of funny, you were technically pregnant and I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, I got knocked up and my husband wasn't with me. Uh, the transfer process, what they have you do, is they tell me I have to drink a ton of water before I go in because I want your bladder full. Um, so they say to drink, I think, 20 ounces of water, which I probably drank closer to 40 because I'm a little OCD and didn't <laughs> want anything to go wrong. Uh, so my mom came really or no, she came the night before, stayed the night, and then took me early that morning for our transfer. And by the time I got to the doctor's office, 
I had to pee so bad that it hurt to sit down. Like, so much pain to sit down. Um, but they were like, you can probably pee a little bit. I was like, no, not until the doctor sees me, not until like he tells me that I'm okay. Like I'm not ruining anything that could possibly happen. So my mom, they let my mom come back with me for the transfer. Uh, she had to wear like a, a mask and like a bonnet and everything. And they take you back and it was pretty cool. They show you the Petri dish that has your little tiny embryos in it um, on a like TV up in the corner of the room and uh, they put you in the spread eagle position, put the speculum in like you're having a pap, and then they come into the room, like the lab tech comes into the room with like a little um, syringe, and they put the syringe inside my vagina and like squirt the two embryos in. And then I kind of just laid there for 15 minutes or so afterwards. But they also give you a picture. So it was like the first time that I got to see a baby picture. I know it sounds silly because they're like, embryo is not like a baby what you would picture, but to us that was our first baby picture. And he wasn't even there. So I sent him a picture mm -hmm. of the picture. But you forgot the best part. What? The doctor saw you, you had to pee so bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my bladder was so full uh, that he made me get up and go pee, uh, count to like 15 seconds. And then I came back and my bladder was still pretty full, but he was able to do the procedure. I was still uncomfortable, but not like to the point where I felt like I was going to pee on the table um, like I felt originally. And for you, he didn't just like squirt them into the vagina. He actually like went under your uterine wall and... Like through the cervix. Placed them into the uterus. lining. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so it like goes through the cervix. Like the uterus is actually pretty small. It's like about the size of my fist maybe. Um, so they go through the cervix, which is at the bottom, and like try to go all the way up to the, the top of the uterus and put them directly there so they have better chances of sticking. So yeah, so they do that. And then starting that night, no, I lied. Starting after our, our retrieval, I had to start doing nightly shots in my butt. Um, they're progesterone shots and it's, grab them. oh yeah, he's going to grab a needle so we can show you and it's oil. I don't have any of the oil left, but it's actually, you're putting oil into your muscle. So you can imagine that doesn't feel great. And, um, I found that it was a lot easier for me to have other people do that than to do it myself. So John did it like the first couple of days cause he was home and then he went back to work, which again is not at home. And so I tried to do it myself. Yeah. Here's the size of this bad boy. You have to put one cc, which is, I don't know, fingernail and a half, that much. But then there's the needle. I'm sure you can see that. That see is it. a, what gauge needle is that? 20? 20, 20, yeah, 20 gauge? Yeah. One and a half inch. And that's a huge needle. That's almost as big as my pinky. And that's just got to be buried to the hub all the way to the muscle in your butt cheek mm -hmm. and it hurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean she's a pro though, she's a champ. And we have to do that every day for well, I mean, unfortunately, sad news it didn't work. Yeah. But if it did, you would have had to do this every day for how long? Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks, which is nuts. Yeah. So I try to do it myself a couple times and like if you can imagine, you know, like trying to reach around yourself into your own butt is not the easiest. They tell you to do it in the upper out of outer, excuse me, upper outer quadrant of your butt cheek. Um, so it is possible, but it's really hard to keep the whole needle, like this whole part into my butt with one hand. Cause you're, you know, you can't reach with both hands. That's impossible. So you're doing it all kind of one handed. So I think I did it myself like twice and each time I got like a giant welt uh, it was not, it was not. Well, it's fun. hard to keep your cheek relaxed when you're standing yeah. and twisting, so. Mm -hmm. So I tried to have like my mom come out or my friends do it. I think a lot of people have seen my butt cheek <laughs> now at this point. Um, and you've done it like at all different places. Um, there's times that, you know, we were at dinner and he did it in the back seat of uh, our car. So I like, drew all the medication up and we both got in the back seat and he was giving me an injection in my ass 
in the back seat of the car, which I'm sure other passerbys were wondering uh, what yeah. was going on. Probably thought we were having a lot more fun <laughs> in the back seat. Than or the fact that I'm sitting in the front seat trying to draw it up, and it looks like I'm drawing up heroin. Yeah, it's so. about the same color, I think. I assume heroin is like a yellowy color. Um, yeah, so that we did. Uh, and as he said, unfortunately, it didn't work. But the worst part, I think, is you have to wait two weeks to find out if it worked or not. So every night I'm getting the shot in my ass and all day long just you're, you're told your pupo is a term for it. Pregnant until proven otherwise. Uh, so you have to act like you're pregnant, which means like you can't drink, um, which is all you want to do because you're so stressed out. <laughs> like all I wanted was a glass of wine, but I couldn't have one because I could possibly be pregnant. Um, like you can't eat like lunch meat or any of the things that pregnant ladies aren't supposed to eat. I didn't even drink coffee, which was really hard for me because I work swing shift and sometimes like you just need coffee to keep going, but I stayed away from it for the whole two weeks. Um, then you go in after two weeks and they do the blood draw that tells you the HCG to tell you if you're pregnant or not. Um, some people throughout this process pee on pregnancy tests and kind of look to see if they'll get a faint line on the, the pee test. Um, but I try not to do it and then I gave in, I don't know, maybe a week into it. Mm -hmm. Like a week or a week and a half. Yeah. And I, unfortunately mine, was negative um, when I did pee on this trip, which a lot of people are still because it's so early, but it put me like in a bad state of mind after that. Like, so I peed on this strip, uh, the pee test, and it was negative. And when it was negative, I think my mindset changed from like, oh, I'm probably pregnant to I'm probably not pregnant. Um, and then I think I started to get other signs that I wasn't pregnant too, like, I break out typically before my period starts and I started to get acne and I think I just got more and more like set on the fact that it probably didn't work. Um, and then again, when they did call me to tell me it didn't work, it was a Wednesday. So he was again up at work and I was in the car with a male friend of mine. Um, and like not we're not that close, but we're friends, you know, but it was still super awkward Like I get a phone call and it's just me and this guy I work with in the car <laughs> and I Had to tell him to like pull over. I was like just pull over. I got out of the car and Took the bad news and I even though I knew like in my heart that it was negative like it still hurt like it was a like, it was still a shock. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but I ended up having my friend take me back to my car and just coming home and I called John and he's like in the middle of a work day and told him the news. No, yeah. but I still got to surprise you. Drove all the way home that night just to spend time with you because it was hard on both of us. Uh, knowing that we have to do this all over again, the hormones, the shots, the everything. It's just, it's bad news. Yeah, I, he didn't tell me he was coming home. Um, he told me that you were sending something or, or something <laughs> along those lines. So in my head, I assumed like he was sending flowers or something. Um, but I laid on our couch back there for like, I don't know, a good hour straight, just crying. And it's not in like the sobbing way, it was in the way where I was just laying there and my eyes wouldn't stop, just continuously watering. Um, and then one of my friends came over and like tried to cheer me up. She brought like mimosas and cheeses, like all the things you couldn't have for those two weeks. And we just ate junk food and like talked and watched Grey's Anatomy <laughs> um, from the beginning. Uh, and then my dad showed up with soup and wine um, and then my mom came over, and then um, John surprised me, and then they all left, <laughs> uh, which was good because I think I think I needed him, you know, that day. Obviously, I would have liked him to be there, but it really just I don't know. I think I was able to let it out a little bit more. 
yeah, I mean, it's definitely a journey that we're going through together and it's important to always try and be with you as much as possible. It's just life gets in the way and I'm glad I was able to still see you though. Me too, me too. So where does that leave us now? Um, then, you know, we, we made an appointment at that time. Like that also drove me nuts. It's like they tell you the bad news on the phone and then they're like, okay, when do you want to come back? And you're like, what? Like I need a minute to process all this. I think she called me three times that day, like first to give me the bad news, then like maybe 20 minutes later to see how I was doing, which obviously I'm doing terrible, okay? Like you just told me I'm not pregnant. I just gave you $15,000 to put a baby in me and I'm not pregnant. Um, I've been stabbing myself and praying every day and not pregnant, so I'm not doing well, but you can't say that to her. Like, I don't even know what I said. I can't remember what I said. I just was still like in this state of shock. And then she called me the third time, like, hey, when do you want to schedule an appointment to come in and talk to the doctor? I was like, great. So I think we made that up. I made it for Monday so he could go. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how long after we got the bad news it was. Maybe the next Monday, I don't know. It was pretty recent, yeah. It was probably a week or two later, but. We can cover that next time in a different video and talk all about the strategies we had going forward and what the doctor had to say and all of that coming up in a future video. Yeah, so please stay tuned, subscribe if you wanna um, continue to follow our journey and please pray for us. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get a baby soon out of all of this. Yeah, we will, gotta stay positive. Yeah. All right. Thank you, YouTube. We'll see you soon.